This will be a lecture on strategic financial analysis. This lecture is divided into a few parts. Part one will focus on financial statement review. For students who have never taken a financial analysis, this will give you an overview of the four important financial statements and the role of financial ratio analysis. Hello, my name is Professor Ki Chan. I'm in the Department of Health Policy and Administration and in the DRPH program at the University of Illinois Chicago, the School of Public Health. Feel free to email me. This week we will focus on financial statement analysis. We will specifically focus on the balance sheets and the operating statement. The other statement of retained earnings and cash flow statements are also very crucial in financial analysis. We will focus on these two other statements in the latter part of the course. This information is very important for decision makers to evaluate the weakness and the strength of a company or an organization's financial projections. The information can be important to provide the financial ratio analysis across industries and within an organization between years. The balance statement is consists of three important components. They are assets, liabilities, and net assets. Assets can be categorized by current assets and non-current assets. Current assets are defined by what the organization has, what have been invested in, and what have been deposited in with others. Current assets can be defined as assets within one year. Non-current assets are defined over one year. Liabilities are also defined as current liabilities and non-current liabilities. Current liabilities are what the organization owes to others or holds on behalf of others. You can imagine this would include debt, long-term debt, short-term debt. Net assets are equivalent to the net worth of an organization. These three components makes up the balance sheet. In the corporate world, they define this financial statement as the balance sheet. In the nonprofit organization world, they define this financial statement that encompasses the assets and liability as a statement of financial position. One of the differences between nonprofit and corporate world is that the difference between current assets and current liability is defined as net assets. In the corporate world, they see this difference as defined as owner or stakeholder equity. Assets is listed in the order of liquidity. What this means is that items that are more cash ready are listed on the top in the assets category. Assets that are less liquid, such as inventory, which means that they are not cash readily available immediately, is listed near the bottom of the assets category. Liability is listed in the order of maturity. For example, short-term debt will be listed on the top, and long-term debt will be listed at the bottom in the liability section. Here you see a balance statement provided by Texas Health. It gives you information on the current liabilities, current assets, and net assets for two years, 2008 and 2009. As you notice here, where it is circled, it highlights the total assets, total liability, and total net assets. Total liability plus total assets equals the total assets. If you also notice on the asset side that cash and cash equivalent is listed on the top because it is considered more liquid compared to inventory which would take much more time to be translated into cash. Current liability and current liability is listed in the section where you can see that long-term debt 
Net assets is divided into three categories, unrestricted, temporarily restricted, and permanently restricted. The reason why these categories are divided into these three specific ways is due to the nature of the funds and the restrictions on the funds. For example, unrestricted assets are considered undesignated. They could be surplus or deficiency from a previous fiscal year. Therefore, they're funds that you can utilize. Or there could be funds that the board designated for a specific project, for a cash reserve, for a specific purchase, or for property and equipment. These are net assets that has no restrictions. Therefore, the funds can be utilized with great freedom. On the other hand, temporarily restricted net assets have some imposed restrictions. They are either for a specific proposed project, for a specific function, or for a capital function. And it needs to meet the specific function either within a specific time frame or for a specific cause. Permanently restricted net assets are often restriction imposed by the donor. So for example, endowment is an example of where purpose restriction could be in place, where a specific scholarship is only available for a specific group or for a specific cause or for a specific place. This is a nice summary for you to recognize the unrestricted, temporarily restricted, and permanently restricted NES assets have very unique differences in how the funds are allocated and utilized. In summary, assets equals liability plus net assets. If we refer back to the balance statement provided by Texas Health and look at the column in the year 2008, we will see that total assets was $3,488,035 and total liability was $1,566,655 and the net assets was $1,887,156. You can do the same math for The operating statement is often referred to as the profit and loss statement, revenue statement, statements of financial performance, earning statement, income statement, statement of operation. It contains the financial activities for a specific period or for a month or a quarter of a year. It includes the revenue, money taken in, expense, and the difference between the two. Here you see the operating statement provided by Texas Health. You can see that the total operating revenue minus the total operating expense gives you the operating income. This is the basic formula in the operating statement. Please take a note of all the items that made up the operating revenue. In this specific case, net patient service revenue and net realized investment income. Anything that had a negative, which is defined as loss, is, per, is represented with a parentheses. Also take advantage of looking at what they count as expenses. Now that you learn that the operating income is defined by the differences between the total operating revenue minus the total operating expense, we also want to understand how do we determine the net income. Here the net income is determined by adding the operating income plus other revenues and gain. 
So what can be examples of other revenues and gains? Well, in a hospital setting, let's say there is space available at the bottom floor next to the hospital, which is owned by the hospital. They could simply rent out that space to a yoga studio, which is complementary to their Data extracted from the balance sheet and from the operating system give rise to financial ratio analysis. In our next lecture video, we'll discuss more in detail the financial ratio analysis. These financial ratios are very crucial for a decision maker to understand the weakness and the strength of an organization. See you on Blackboard!